People don't care what you know until they know that you care. No matter what changes, mm-hmm. history repeats itself. Mm-hmm. So to watch the patterns of finances, when you even look at graphs, you can see, I mean, there may be changes in the lifespan of what a role of an economy mm-hmm. is, um, but there is, there is a lot of merit to the history mm-hmm. of finances and what the world does. Kara, I know your background is in real estate and business. How did you get there? Um, and what, what kind of things did you learn along the way to help you get to the place where you're at today? Uh, I think because when I was scouting out what can I do, teacher's not going to work, I've got to make this income that came out of the divorce stretch. I had a, a, a dear friend in high school, and her mom was a realtor. And I was just like, whoa. You mean women can have a career? I know that sounds really silly, but back there, it was a small country town, and I was just like amazed that she started a career later in life and was an amazing realtor. So it gave me great courage that I could do that too. Um, It was more challenging starting out because we lived in a city that we had only lived in Fort Collins Mm -hmm. for like, I don't know, two years. So it wasn't like I had this huge network of people that loved me and wanted to work with me. Uh, But at that time, it just started, internet leads just started. And they were really, really better leads. And they were very inexpensive compared to now. So I would just sign on for leads and I would call them and just keep working the business. And eventually, I would say probably about three years later, business started turning. Because people sell homes every three to seven years usually, and then you keep up with your clients, and then the repeat business started coming in. So that's when things really started taking off for me. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, you treat the business as it is. It's friends, Mm -hmm. and it's people. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, the home is just the commodity. It's really a people business. So when you stay in touch with people, they know that you care about them. You know, what they say, that adage that people don't care what you know until they know that you care. (laughs) And so really keeping that alive. And then people just really are honored to refer me um, because they know that I care for the person. I'll take good care of them. I wanted to know from you as a realtor, financially, how does the commission structure look like? Because I think many people go into the industry and they have this idea of, what they want it to look like versus what it looks like in the beginning. You know, you got to build reputation, build clientele, build business like you had just suggested and before commission rolls in. So how does that look like financially maybe in the first couple of years versus in the latter years when you become more established as a realtor? Sure. So you'd liken it like maybe if you were a hairdresser and you were an independent person, Mm -hmm. a business person. So you go into a... um, company like that because they actually don't pay you for anything. You're paying them. So for instance, you get your commission and a cut of that goes off the top to the company that you work for, Mm -hmm. but you pay for a lot of your marketing materials. If not all of them, Mm -hmm. you pay for your copies, you pay for your office desk. There's different commission structures, different companies work differently. So I'm just speaking generally. Mm -hmm. Um, but basically I think what you pay for is the label that you're working under a big company label, like a Keller Williams, Cobalt Banker, Remax, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And to get started as an agent that many times is probably helpful. I know it was for me because the label just gave me a type of substantiation that I wouldn't have had on my own. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people um, love the uh, collection of agents that are available that you can talk to in a company, you can share leads together and just that camaraderie because it can be a very lonely business oh. because you're a single agent. Got it. Yes, yes. So they like coming in, having office meetings, that sort of thing oh. and learning. A lot of the really good companies will have education where they will bring in people and educate you so you get those resources. Yeah. So I stayed with a big company probably the first three quarters of my career so far. Mm -hmm. I've been in this a little over two decades. Mm -hmm. And then about five years ago, started my own company. And so that's been a whole new experience. Yeah. 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 Risk is not something that we like to do. You know, most people are not very risk tolerant. If not, they're very risk adverse. And we're taught, especially in school, to be on the 
uh, fence about risk. Make sure you take it with, you know, grain of salt. Make sure you make sure you all the securities are in place. How did you take that risk and what motivated you? It felt a lot more risky mm -hmm. until I started looking into it. Because worst case, what if it didn't work? Well, I just fold up shop and go back to another big name. Yeah. And it is what it is. Yeah. I, I wouldn't going to be that much out of pocket for right. it. No matter what changes, mm -hmm. history repeats itself. Mm -hmm. So to watch the patterns of finances, when you even look at graphs, you can see, I mean, there may be changes in the lifespan of what a role of an economy mm -hmm. is, um, but there is, there is a lot of merit to the history mm -hmm. of finances and what the world does. The real reason behind it all is that I felt the Lord was asking me to start a real estate company, make it all about the people, how can we actually serve the people mm -hmm. the way God wants it? And then the money literally just comes from there. People are wondering right now what to do, right? It's inflation and people are struggling with finances. Sure. For the young people or even maybe someone older wanting to start and we'll get into real estate in terms of being an agent, do you think it's sustainable for them or realistically how long will it take for them to make it a sustainable living? When people talk to me about coming into real estate, mm -hmm. I ask them to have maybe three or six months of income set aside mm -hmm. before they get to their first closing. Oh, because a close, you know, you know what it's like when we go yeah. shop for homes and then once you go under contract, it's 30 to 45 days later you close, you get your check at the closing table. So you need time to okay. be able to do that. And I don't think there's anything worse than doing real estate and just living commission check to commission check because your motives are, they, they get, I think, impure because it's really not about the people. I mean, you always have to make a living. Right. We say this business isn't for charity. Sometimes it feels that way. Yeah. Um, but um, it really is about being able to help. So if you're so tight commission check to commission check, then you start feeling, well, boy, I need to do this to make a living. What can I do? You don't want to, um, you don't want to jeopardize mm. the integrity of yourself and what you might do in a transaction to make it less integral. Tell me about financial literacy because as a business owner and also a woman in business for so many years now, you know a lot about finances, I think more than the typical person I've ever talked to. Oh, how did you how did you learn like self-learn? How did you do sure. this? And also, is it hard for women to be financial literate because it seems like even today the economics field, the business field, especially the economics field and the finance field is a lot of male dominant. Sure. So how did you learn and how would you encourage others to learn? <laughs> this is obviously dating me. Susie Orman uh -huh. had this book in it and I thought that's amazing. She's a woman. She's writing a book for yeah. finance. So I picked it up and read one and it was so approachable. And then I read another and I just learned those things wow. and uh, from that because I just had this internal fear that drove me that this money is, you know, what if it doesn't make it? Oh. What if I don't, you know, I just, this internal fear really drove me. It was more than that than a curiosity about what are these financial instruments and what do they do? I just knew I needed to make it work for my children and I mm -hmm. to make the money stretch, to be able to make an income. So Suzu Orman and then um, Dave Ramsey came out in yeah. the churches. So I went to listen to one of his, his, of his first series. And I thought that was very helpful. As a generation, I don't think we understand money. You know, the basics of money, we know it. we spend it, we can save it, we should invest it, and that's it. We don't know, understand besides that, you know? Why, why do we not talk about it then if we don't understand it? Because I feel like talking about a subject brings more knowledge to the table for everyone. But we seem like we're reluctant as a society to talk about it. A couple things that come to mind is, um, I think in America, we have a really deep Protestant roots. Mm -hmm. And from that, a couple of things is like, we are taught to really work hard. Uh -huh. You know, like that, that, that is like godly. Right. You know, like it's godly to work hard. And I think that talking about money also maybe falls in that Protestant roots where it, it's just not uh, seen as, I don't know, I'm just thinking about this, it's just not seen as the thing that you do when you're a godly person. Mm 
Mm-hmm. You know, it's not something that comes in the conversation. I think that money gets a bad rap in a way. Huh. I think uh, like the Proverbs talks to us a lot about money, about right. wisdom of right. money and how right. to use money and yeah. how to work diligently. Right. Um, but I think a lot of the focus in the, in the faith has been our reputation that we've had is that money is the root of all evil. And there's a lot of tension in the Bible. There's verses like that. There's verses about working hard. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think that maybe that's it from the Protestant background. It just feels like a a type of shame to bring up money and talk about it. So Mm -hmm. the second thing is, is I just wonder if it's more like the imposter syndrome. Like a lot of us don't know about money. So if we start talking about it, then maybe it'll show that we don't know about money and we'll break down this image that we have, that we have it all together. We have life together. So, um, and also as a single mama, you raise two incredible kids, you know, while having your own business, while trying to stay afloat and getting through life, you did so well. What would you say to any single mamas maybe watching this video right now and they're maybe struggling or just in a state of confusion would you give them some advice on what you have? Oh, yeah, that's a hard one. Boy, you have to balance so much as a single mom. And the thing that helped me later on is realizing that I always felt like I didn't have a husband. But when I got the concept, you know, in Isaiah in the Bible, it tells us that the maker is our husband. Mm-hmm. And when I realized that I wasn't doing it alone, that God was really being that husband to me and helping me with decisions when I was praying and providing and opening doors and things that were just amazing. So I believe that just knowing that, you know, my identity, like not only was he my father, he was my best friend as Jesus, but he's also my husband. Mm -hmm. So that helped fill that lonely spot. Mm -hmm. And that, man, I got to go out there. I'm the single breadwinner, you know, that he was doing it with me. So that was very, very helpful. And the big why is when your job gets really, really, really hard. You're ready to throw in the towel. What is Hi, everyone. Uh, we had a situation where my memory card died and I realized <laughs> I didn't bring the other one. So here's my iPhone shot of this last question that's very valuable. The big why is for your children. Right, right. And you have a lot of support. There's a lot of single moms out there doing this, a lot more than when I was doing it. So it's, it's doable. And your kids are really, really proud of you. Um, the thing about kids is they don't tell you a lot of things, mm. especially until they get, you know, and what they say, parents get a lot smarter when the kids get over 25. <laughs> that's so true. And it's just because we need life experience and that's just how it is. And then we become more friends with our kids and they're able to tell you things. And like the things my kids said to me is they were watching. I could tell they were watching Mm -hmm. and they were really, really, really proud of me. It is such an attribute that you're doing for your children. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Kara. Appreciate that. Yes.